Okay, hello. Um, I have decided to do a little, uh, I don't even know what it's called. I've seen it called like paint with me or draw with me or something like that where I bring you along with me on my process while I create a piece of art and it might turn into nothing. It might just be like fun practice sketchbook sort of stuff or it might be a thing. <laughs> In my experience, you never know until it's done. Um, so I'm going to be focusing on starting a, a series of animals that are special to me from the Sonoran Desert. And, um, that may not appeal to everyone in the world and it may not appeal to everyone out, anyone outside of the Sonoran Desert, but those of us in the, in the area are very smitten with a lot of these animals that I'm going to focus on. So the one I chose which I'm pretty into, um, and I'm surprised that I've never, I'm surprised I've never done a quail portrait before. I've done quail eggs. I have done quail eggs. Um, but I've never, I've never drawn quail. I've never painted quail. And, um, it's about time I changed that. So they're one of my more favorite animals from the desert. They are just so adorable. The babies are so cute. They, I think it's the males that have that like little like top hat sort of thing going on that I really appreciate because they look like they're all dressed up in a tuxedo or something. They're very fancy. They're very fancy. Um, and... Uh, they don't really fly around much. You mostly see them walking on the on the ground. Um, they mate for life. That's one thing that's really cool about quail. Um, so I, I don't know. I just think they're special. So I'm gonna do some quail today, and we'll see how it goes. So I'm gonna take you along with me on that. And um, words are seem to be failing me right now. So maybe it's best that I focus on art instead. Um, so I hope this works okay. I'm gonna roughly estimate a five by seven area and get that measured out real quick. And then I will use some of the washi tape to delineate that area. Okay. Very, very loose, basic outline. I will come back around and tidy that up significantly as we move forward. But this is um, just to get an idea of where to put paint down. And so, pull out some paints here. The paint that I'm using, it's a Liquitex. It's their um, professional heavy body acrylic. And that's just what I've got. I understand that a lot of people on YouTube really tend towards gouache, and I can't blame them. I don't happen to have gouache, and I've never tried it or used it, um, but I'm certainly open to doing so uh, one day in the future. Uh, for right now, though, I'm using what I've got and what I have a relationship with. So right now what I have a relationship with is acrylics. It's what I've been using most of my life. I have lived in quite a bit of poverty, admittedly, in my life, so um, I did not go to art school, like I've said before, and um, that's a financial thing. <laughs> that's not something I could afford. Um, same with, um, you know, just all my supplies. They are adequate, but not high-end. And, you know, I even have some leftovers of, like, this sort of stuff, um, which I don't really use much anymore, but I do have some use for occasionally, so I don't throw them away necessarily. Okay. So this is just going to be a real light background. I'm not going to use that at all. 
background, wash. I do tend to use these. They're not unlike gouache and they're not unlike watercolors. So I guess now is a good time to mention that in case anyone feels inadequate watching some of the artists on YouTube do their thing, I am here to say it's okay if you don't have that kind of confident, perfect brush stroke and technique that they do. It is okay. I feel like my art process has a lot more to do with recovering from my mistakes than anything else. And what I mean by that is I just start doing a thing and I immediately start detecting what I don't like about it and start recovering from those mistakes, if you will, from that point on. And that is where my art comes from. Um, I have seen so many people that just do this amazing artwork very effortlessly and God bless them. <laughs> just God bless them for that. But that is certainly not me and um, you know it's it doesn't need to be you either if, if that in any way makes you feel inadequate. So Okay, back to it. Back to it. So, definitely some childhood memories with quail. Um, unfortunately, um, over 40 years of, of being in the desert, I have, I have seen a decrease in the prevalence of quail just kind of running around in the city. They exist. They're more on the outskirts. They're more in the foothills um, than anything. You can see compared to some of the people that use the gouache how quickly this dries. And that's just something, you know, you, you learn to work with. Um, it doesn't really bother me very much, but I can also see the appeal of the gouache for sure. Um, driving along the, the roads in the desert especially in the foothills as you get closer up towards the mountain ranges. They're, they're so cute because they just run, they, they, you know, and they, you have to care, be careful not to run them over because they'll dart out in front of you, the whole family. One thing that you need to be careful of with quail is if you see one run out in the road, slow down and, and keep your eye on what's coming next. Because if one goes out, it's possible in a second or two, the whole family is going to come running out. Mommy, daddy, babies. And I think they even adopt little lost babies that they find. So, um, if, a, if a baby gets separated, he'll just kind of wander into a new family <laughs> and they'll raise him. It's so cute. Um, so yeah, just the whole group of them. All right.
their little top hat feather, which I'll paint later, probably at the very, very end, is one of my favorite features. They really... They have quite a bit of personality, I will say. So what we're going to do here is just get a little looser. A lot of this is going to be covered up even still. So we kind of can't do any wrong here. I mean, you could. <laughs> and I could certainly try. I think you know what I mean. So we're going for just, you know, background foliage slightly out of focus. We're going to do some foreground stuff that's going to make this all make a lot more sense. And I'm, I'm crazy with water, you know, it's, it makes the paper warp. Yes, it does. But at the same time, it's what I do. It's what I do. I'm a water sign. <laughs> she says making an excuse for herself and her sloppy ways. So. I'm not sure if you just saw the top of my head or not. I washed my hair, so we're good. <laughs> okay. You know, there's a, there's just a time for everything and there's a time for going in there with kind of a looser approach. And certainly in this sort of background that I'm attempting here, that is the time. dry. And I'm going to prep this bottom area. In fact, I'll get started on that now. Just a touch of blue. And a touch of funny when you first see something you don't expect it to have blue in it but then when you really kind of break the color down there it is and it's so interesting how that's how we see everything we 
we assume we're seeing these simple colors and we assume that, you know, when we see one thing, it's that color. But in so many respects, we're seeing what is reflecting off of it and what is kind of going on as it contrasts with the things around it, etc. So now I'm just kind of bringing in some, um, I used to be much more um, heavy-handed with my paint, but I've just wasted so much paint in the day. And then when I started buying more expensive paint, I was like, slow your roll, girl. Like, it doesn't take that long to squeeze a little bit more out, but it's always kind of painful to squeeze a whole bunch out and then not use it, you know? Um, so, anyway. Just getting some texture on this. anyone else have shaky hands? I see these people with this like kind of very suave technique and approach on on YouTube and I'm like who are they? How did they get that good? How that that like kind of very um stable very stable Again, I really look at art as a series of making a variety of mistakes and then kind of falling into them. Fixing some, deciding some were, you know, best left the way they are, <laughs> etc. Um, and sometimes it's just mood dependent which ones last and which ones don't. So I used to actually have a, um, an art space I shared with a friend and, um, that was a very, very nice lifestyle that I was building for myself. And unfortunately it didn't last and I don't have that space anymore, but, um, I will say there's something very um, nice about having something else going on outside of just painting. Um, because even, even this discussion that I'm kind of engaging in right now is distracting me from the perfectionism of it all. And there's something to be said for that because that's where a lot of the, a lot of the, uh, you know, for lack of a better way of saying it, a lot of the happy accidents come from. <laughs>
you really just kind of get to focus on other things, and it's amazing what happens when you start focusing outside of yourself and outside of what you're doing even. So I guess that's kind of what I'm aiming for with this. There's something about, it's dissociative. It's dissociative to be able to kind of really check out. And those of us that tend to dissociate, I, you know, I don't have, you know, it comes in all different forms and all different um, degrees of like severity. And I would say that mine is not a severe Certainly not, you know, dissociative identity disorder or anything even approaching that. Um, I've had friends that will lose days or weeks at a time and I can't even wrap my mind around that. That's, that's so hard for me to imagine because that's a, such a loss of control. Um, but I do like to kind of go deeply into creativity, which I do believe is, is similarly dissociative. Just not to the same degree. Okay. Okay, so welcome back. I ran out of storage space on my phone, which is what I'm filming on right now, and it doesn't notify me with any sort of little chime, unfortunately. So um, what you missed, uh, it's probably pretty evident, um, is, is the color that I've added to this background. Um, and it really wasn't, you know, terribly <laughs> exciting. Uh, if you saw me put the darker tones down, the grays, then, then you kind of know what that went like. It's the same, it's just I threw some, some, you know, yellows and oranges in there as well. And um, so now I'm going to pick up with where we left off. And I'm going to work in just a little bit more detail in the, to the background before I start on the quail. Um, and I will be checking periodically to make sure that my camera doesn't fail me again. Um, so here we go. I'm gonna make chair noises. Okay. So this is a much rougher paintbrush. I think it's actually like a house painting paintbrush as opposed to the guy I was working with before, which was that. So you can see they're very different and this is gonna get a little bit more um, texture 
in <clears throat> to this background that I'm working on. Let's see here. Okay, so I'm not, I'm going to get a little more yellow too. Try not to overdo it, but just get a little, a little additional texture. So I forget what I was saying. <laughs> that would have been helpful to follow a bit, of, you know, from, from where I got cut off, but it is what it is. Um, so while I leave that to dry, I'm going to start blocking in this um, area for the quail, and I am going to use... like a, a medium grayish get out of the yellow there okay so I'm gonna use a medium gray to block it in and then we're gonna do some highlights and some low lights and some color touch-ups and um, then I think what we're going to do is we're going to come in with um, some colored pencils at the end and really kind of bring it all together, kind of um, help crisp it up a bit with the detail work. And I also have some additional uh, foliage in the foreground and a little bit in the background that's just going to work better as colored pencil. And, you know, because I haven't spent a whole lot of time around uh, a particular brand of artistic type of people, um, I'm, I'm wondering if maybe they might consider that cheating <laughs> to do that. And, um, you know, to, to which I would say tough, tough shit, tough, tough cookies, um, whatever the nice way of saying that is. Uh, I can't be bothered at this point to care one way or another. If it works and makes it look like a nice piece, then I'm happy with that. And that's all there is to it. <clears throat> so we're just blocking it in. Oh, hi, doggy. My doggy just came in. I'm sure you heard him. Hi, come here. Hi, come here. Yes. Oh, he's a good dog. Oh, my goodness. He's a good dog. I have to share how good he is. I have to share how good he is. He's got little green eyes. Hi. Hi, baby. Oh, he's so good. He's so good. 
Yes. All right, now I gotta fix this. <laughs> it was worth it. It's funny when you start drawing wildlife and nature scenes, you'll realize quite quickly that um, how detailed do you want to get, you know, because the more you look, the more it all breaks down into itty bitty little segments and fine, fine, fine detail. So like it reminds me of, and this is a terrible, this is, my, my tattoo is in a terrible condition right now. Um, it didn't heal well and I need to get a touch up, but it just reminds me. So I, I got this pomegranate and then I also got this, um, Gila monster. Uh, let me make sure that's focused. And they're so similar really when it comes to the scales or the beads of the, of the pomegranate, um, that you wouldn't think. But it all comes down to, and so many fruits especially I have found because I wanted to do a whole sleeve of fruits, but my gosh, the most interesting fruits I have to say are all like little itty bitty segments, just really kind of painfully detailed. <laughs> um, so I kind of thought again uh, when that happened because I realized it's going to be nothing but just those tiny little beads and details for the whole settings. When you're dealing with citrus fruits, you've got all of those little, not just the segments, but inside the segments, you have all the different little pockets of like they're, um, they've, they've got a, there's a scientific word, a membrane. There's a membrane and then they're kind of like filled with, fruit juice, basically. So this guy's got a little shadow on him. Gotta make sure that's in there. This is kind of the stage where things shift from being that loose, gestural, is that the right word, um, technique to a bit more thoughtful, a bit more intentional, a bit less dissociated. <laughs> I mean, there's no right or wrong. And if you do do this stuff, all dissociated out, good on you. But I have to concentrate a bit more in order to be able to pull it off.
some colored pencils and crisp that up with some highlights. So for right now, that's just going to be black. That's very satisfying. <laughs> oh yeah. Hi, I'm a quail. I'm a fancy boy and I've got a top hat on. Yes, yes I do. So, same with this little sucker here. like every day they're dressed to the nines and here I am in my jammies every day could learn a thing from these little guys okay Twenty four minutes already. Another thing I've noticed about people on YouTube being massively more um, competent artistically than myself <laughs> is um, the speed with which they can just kind of uh, crap out a masterpiece. Good job, everybody! Amazing. Um, truly, I I wonder if maybe with practice. One day I will get to that point. Um, but for me, it really always has been, like I said, just kind of a series of mistakes and falling into them that is what I call my process. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. Because at the end of the day, I think especially since I haven't been trying to make money off of art for like all my life. This is the first time I've ever put anything for sale other than like the jewelry I used to sell. Um, so it was never about comparison with me. It was about I like doing it. And when that happens, it opens up the door for you to enjoy the end result also. Because again, it's not about comparison. I'll make something and then I'll put it down for a little while, and that's essential. Um, the putting it down and walking away from it. And I always find when I come back, I'm like, wow, I like that. Oh, well, I, not always. Not always. <laughs> but oftentimes, I'm surprised. Because when I'm sitting in front of something for an extended period of time, you know, it just feels like, kind of like I was describing, a, a series of mistakes um, 
and that's how I that's how I see it. Uh, but when you come back later and you see it through kind of a different frame of reference with fresh eyes, it's got a whole new thing going on. And especially since I don't expect it to hang in a gallery, I, I can allow myself that, um, that surprise, that happy surprise, that, um, there's a word for it. <laughs> I'm blanking on it right now, but, um, you know, I'm impressed, I'm impressed because I didn't know, you know, I'll look back on something and I'll be like, I'm using techniques that I didn't even know I knew. <laughs> That's the weird thing. I didn't even know I could do that. Or I'll see someone do something and I'm like, oh, that's a great idea. And then I'll look back over my own artwork and be like, oh, I've, I've, I've done that. But it was more, it felt new when, when someone else did it. So, for what that's worth. Okay, we're going to start here. doing some of these little highlights here. Actually. Gotta be ready. You can erase paint, it just has to be wet. And you can always paint over it too. You can always paint over it. Now we're going to start getting into this really fine detail. Oh my goodness. So yeah, patterns. So as, as, again, the, with the with the pomegranate and the Gila monster example, it's it's these like patterns of fine detail um, where it starts with
it starts with um you know small and then kind of gradually gets bigger feathers but it's all these little itty bitty segments these little itty bitty stages if that makes any sense I'm going to kind of do these in unison just because that kind of makes sense to me. Get the color distribution to be. It's like a strange combination of random and uniformity. <laughs> Which is kind of an interesting thing to try and mimic. Nature does it so effortlessly. And yet, I really kind of have to figure it out. shadows and have it be a little bit more specific in the non-shadowed areas. I have decided not to show my reference. I feel like that might be annoying to some, but I think there's good reason for it for my own sake. <laughs> If nothing else. And if I decide to do it differently in the future, I'll do it differently in the future. I'm going to stop now and pause so that we can transfer this video over to my computer, free up space, so it doesn't stop on me. So. Thank you for following me thus far. This last one hopefully should be the last one. And yeah, we'll take it from there. All right. Okay, here we are again. Let's get this finished. Um, so far, I'm happy with this. So far, so good. Sometimes I keep a spray bottle of water nearby for when I need to keep this from drying up. I don't know if it's actually useful or not, <laughs> but I think it is. Okay. So, where's my quail? There they are. All right. So these are going to start getting a little longer. I don't like how fat this is. Ah. You can erase it as long as it's wet. Okay. Subtract. 
that again. Is this how you paint? This is how I paint. <laughs> Just get my fingers in there. I'm having a hard time narrating at the same time because it's using my brain a little bit more just to switch from the dots to the feather shapes, you know? bit more precision. Oh, there's my doggy again. Hey, good doggy. Hey, good doggy. It will become very quickly evident that I adore my dog. 
<laughs> and also, just, you know, as to, to kind of catch us up on the state of the world, this is COVID still. I am home and have been for some time. Um, so my relationship with my dog is very special to me, especially right now. He is my number one buddy without which I would be going insane. But, I, you know, to be quite honest, speaking of COVID, I have to admit, I have been enjoying it. Not the, you know, just, just deadliness and destruction of, of other people's lives, of course. Not that. Um, but I have to admit that I like being home. In fact, I would go so far as to say I wouldn't be doing this were it not for my desire to continue uh, staying home and trying to find a job that worked for me in that capacity. Um, so this is very much my attempt to continue what I've found to be so enjoyable during COVID. Um, I quite enjoy my solitude to a degree that a lot of people are concerned <laughs> for my well-being. They're concerned because I am so solitary and I haven't always been. I went through some exceptionally um, uh, social years. I have been quite the, at times, kind of a party girl, in fact. Um, and becoming as isolated as I am now and separated from so many things. I'm not on social media. That's going to change because of the art, but still it won't be like a personal page. It'll be a, um, an art page. Uh, so I'm, I'm just really disconnected isolated, whatever you want to call it. I just can't keep. Um, and not everyone knows what to do with that because I had a crew of people in my past who have not changed. <laughs> They're still doing the same thing that we always did. And sure, that makes more sense than what I'm doing, truly. Um, so, They don't know what to think of me. They don't know what to do with me, and I don't blame them. Um, but I'm really just allowing myself all the space and all the time that I want. Recovering from some things, bad relationships, things I got myself into. And this feels right, and despite the fact that some people think it's unhealthy for me to take this much time, I'm doing it anyway. And the world is do doing it at the same time as me anyway right now, and I don't have much of a choice, so I'm just leaning into it. Um, so, I know some people really don't like to hear about my thoughts on solitude because it feels like a little bit of a brag maybe for what they don't have, which is, you know, a lot of people are lonely right now, very lonely. And I don't, I don't want to take the reality away from anyone that that's, an, that's a very reasonable feeling to feel right now. I get it. I get it. We're a social creature. I get it. But at the same time, it's so healthy and happy for me to be able to finally allow myself to just do what I want to do. <laughs> and no one can stop me.
That's how you paint too, right? <laughs> paint it on, smear it off technique. Yeah. It all just coincided so nicely with my separation from my family and, and a lot of my old friends because I no longer drink. Um, a lot of my standards changed and my awareness of inappropriate behaviors. And not to sound like a cliche, because I feel like these things have become real buzzwords, but I also feel like they've become buzzwords because we're all kind of learning and growing at the same time. But, um, you know, abusive personalities. Um, I'm just kind of learning more about what is and isn't appropriate as far as manipulation and... It turns out that I come from quite a bit of manipulative friend group. There's a lot of that in, in alcoholism, and there's a lot of alcoholism in my past. <coughs> I guess I'm not necessarily an alcoholic. Um, I don't quite know how to say it. What, you know, I'm just someone that shouldn't drink. <laughs> I didn't have a hard time stopping once I just stopped, if that makes any sense at all. Um, so I guess for anyone out there who is considering going against the grain of their friend group, I say if you're feeling called to stop Whatever it is in your life, and you're worried about going against the grain, you know, just pay attention to how much you feel obligated, I guess, to um, maintain a certain lifestyle for the sake of others. And do what you want with your life. You're the only one, you're the only one who gets this life. And it's precious and it's short. And if you feel like you will regret complying with others, which is kind of how I felt, then by all means, do what feels right for you. You won't regret it if you're following your heart. And yes, it's messy. Yes, it's difficult. Yes. Socially, it's difficult. I still haven't quite figured out what I'm doing next as far as friends go. Um, because like I said, this coincided so much with... With, um, oh, I got some black paint all over my elbow. Excellent. It coincided with COVID in such a way where it really felt, to me, again, not to take anything away from the tragedy of the situation. But for me, it felt heaven sent to be allowed to withdraw from so many people. Including my clients, which is a whole nother story. So I used to clean houses. That's what I was doing up until um, COVID forced me to close my business down. And 
and since then I have been kind of regrouping. And I really don't want to go back to cleaning houses, and I would say there's actually really nothing wrong with cleaning houses at all, except for the fact that I have been doing it for so long, and I just really feel like I would like to be done with it now, <laughs> for whatever that is worth. Um... I do admit that I had some relationships with my cleaning clients that I was not enjoying. And for anyone out there that is self-employed, if I had any advice to give now, it would be to get rid of the people that drain you even if they're your business clients. Find different people. You know, you don't have to, like, make yourself homeless to do it. You can replace them before you replace them, and that's perfectly fine. Um, you know, meaning, you know, find, find their replacements before you fire them. But I was very relieved to get away from some clients, and I realized that the reason I was staying had only partially to do with money. Some people just have a way with making me feel obligated. And there was a lot of that going on for some of my long-term clients. I felt very attached to them and obligated. And I'm just so glad, frankly, to be rid of them. So glad. So glad. So glad. Um... David Lynch for you, and uh, so yeah, I mean, it's a very transitional time, which can be scary, and I think we're all kind of in a transitional time in one way or another during this, so yes, it can be scary, but also... It's something that you can lean into, and I do recommend that. I do recommend leaning into it, the, the transition. You don't have a choice anyway. <laughs> if things are already shifting, then sometimes the best thing you can do is just stop clenching. Stop holding on. Stop trying to be secure and embrace the fact that the, the essence of the moment is, is really the opposite of that. Now I'm getting philosophical. You're welcome. Um, I think just in general, it's good to have an idea of what you actually want out of your life and to be working towards something. And really giving yourself the respect that you deserve as a sovereign person in this world with agency that you get your own 
and you get to live it however you want, and you can take other people's opinions into consideration, but at the end of the day, it's your life, and you get to do what you want. Not everyone needs to learn that lesson as deeply as I've had to focus in and, and learn it, but I think that there are probably a lot of people out there that do need that lesson. So I will happily be the person to echo that again and again, probably, throughout this, this channel. And you don't have to know yourself as intimately as Hollywood would have you believe everyone does. We're all confused. We're all expecting something more Hollywood than what we actually get. <laughs> but if you can be realistic and give up on some of the un, you know, unrealistic bits, then you will be happily surprised. Where are we? 22. I'm getting to the point where I want to start rushing, so I need to either slow myself down or take a break. And I think, if anything, what I actually might do is switch to colored pencils at this point. Okay. So just some real subtle little touches here. which I may or may not regret. <laughs> As is the case. It's always hard uh, sometimes when you're part of the way through something and you're actually starting to like it because then you don't want to mess it up. And that can turn me into a bit of a chicken shit when it comes to doing anything more, but I guess at this point my personal philosophy is, you know, that it's best to go for it. Messing up is how we, how we learn, and not everything needs to be perfect. But we should definitely be learning. I'm more committed, I guess, to taking risks and making mistakes than the alternative.
Okay, I'm going to back away now. Um, actually, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to strip off the washi tape. Woo! It's always the best part. It's always the best part. Okay, so this looks like the top. I cut off all my nails, too. I think the last time I did this, I, my nails were longer and they were black, so inconsistencies. I can't do anything. There we go. Well, despite my best efforts, it still bleeds through because the, the paper is just so textured. There's really not much I can do about that. But even still, it really makes it look like a real piece of art when you take this silly pink stuff off. I know that there are, oh, that's nice. I know there are a lot of fun designs of washi paper out there. And that seems to be something that people really enjoy. But I could care less, <laughs> frankly. Um, unless I'm using it for packaging. But pink is never my thing. Rarely my thing. Um, so, uh, yeah. It looks so much nicer. hard to go without your nails. <laughs> For as well as I stuck this tape on, you'd think it would have worked better to protect the mat. But again, it's the texture of the paper, and I'm okay with that. So, last little bit. hear my doggy panting in the background. He's pacing around with his nighttime paces. He would love to chase some quail right now. He just laid down like a good dog. Good boy. <laughs> okay. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this. Um... You know, please subscribe, like, or comment, uh, whatever you got in you. Um, but definitely make sure you check back for more if you did enjoy watching this, because there's a lot more to come. Thank you very much.